The Diary of Judas Iscariot, How to Keep Jesus at Arm's Length, written and read by Owen Batstone, printed by the Christian Publishing House. Entry 24 If anyone ever compiles a list of disciples' names, mine will be at the bottom. I'm the only southerner among a herd of Galileans, and I feel their resentment. I see through their kindness towards me. Besides which, Peter ought to be at the bottom of every list, the imbecile. Walking on water, it left him splashing like a sinking behemoth. Lord, save me, he yelped, pathetic. There'll be no record of Judas ever saying that, because I'll never feel a need to. Look, diary, I admit I'm not as religious as the others, and there are at times shortages to my moral life. But in respect to my character generally, there is only reason to feel inspired. If I do falter, it's because the Peters of the world cause me to. Brackets. Matthew 14, verse 22 to 36. Mark 6, verse 45 to 56. John 6, verse 15 to 24. Entry 25. It was a matter of interest to us to see what he would do when the temple taxation was required of him at Capernaum. He has nothing by way of earthly possessions. So Simon was sent waddling and puffing to the sea to retrieve the money from the mouth of a fish. It sounds odd, but I actually wasn't too surprised by this. I've noticed that the rabbi holds a peculiar sway over the bestial kingdom. Animals behave a little differently around him, sometimes pausing wide-eyed in their tracks, dipping their heads in deference. It's as if nature itself would be offended by anyone who doesn't pay homage to this man. His resume grows ever richer. All hail the king of animals, gentile dogs and fishermen. Thankfully, not asking me for money was evidence that he's unaware of my secret accumulation. Brackets. Matthew 17, verse 24 to 27. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Entry 26. Who will be the greatest in his kingdom? He calls over a child and a poor-looking waif at that as his answer. Alas, we grown men are to become like that and not by way of being cute, but in being the glad recipients of what he thinks we cannot provide for ourselves, namely, everything, he thinks. Brackets, Matthew 18, verse 1 to 4. Entry 27. Correction to a previous entry. It won't just be the religious people that have issue with him, it will be the entire world, because, and I quote, he testifies that its works are evil. Tread carefully, Rabbi, or there will be a worldwide calling for your head. Or, I wonder, will the world instead learn to kill itself off to you by paying you no attention? After all, there's a generation of youth rising up to whom evil, sin and judgment are purely concepts for ridicule. Their noise is their most effective tool. They shout with such volume it could make even the fattest person believe he was thin, even if there were not a single shred of evidence to prove it. Thus, in a very unreal way, you'll eventually cease to exist. Brackets, John chapter 7, verse 7. Entry 28. He caught a woman in the act of adultery and he didn't condemn her. I have only one question. Why does he look at her with such love but at me with concern? Brackets, John 8, verse 1 to 11. Entry 29. I've broken from the others for a while and have been sampling other places of worship that might better suit what I want in a religion. It has been a mostly non-profitable time. The first place I visited made me feel welcome and appreciated. They 
rather suspiciously and desperately, lavished me with meals, praise, speaking opportunities, transport, and even a leadership role. Their schedule was admirably packed with fundraisers, fitness clubs, and trips to the beach, which meant little time left over for prayer and teaching, which I liked. But when a new family arrived, I became old hat, which I was fine with because at the exact same time I began noticing some serious problems with the place. The ghastly curtains, incompetent musicians, gossipy women. I couldn't possibly stay there any moment longer. The second place attracted me because my friends were there, but when they left I had no reason to stay. The third had preachers who were gently rocking the people into a state of sedation with their systematic repetition of things everybody already knew that didn't affect them at all. Credit here to the rabbi, there's never such dull moments when he's involved. As for the final place, for all their claims to be upstanding law keepers and to not have indulged in the various forms of corrupt Roman entertainment, their viciousness made the butchery of the Colosseum look like child's play. The leaders made it a high point of every sermon to attack the faults of other places of worship. Their militancy was impressive at first and bred a healthy dose of self-esteem, but they inevitably imploded and split from each other, each group believing their adversity was a sign that God was with them. The mood was dangerously contagious and not worth catching. In short, the hunt for the perfect place goes on. Brackets, John 10, verse 10. Entry 30. Martha would be highly strung on her best day, so was borderline hysterical when the rabbi paid her a visit. Sitting at a rabbi's feet to learn is a privilege almost never afforded to women. Thus, he remains an unsolvable riddle of primitive narrow-mindedness and liberal revolutionary. He places no boundary between himself and anyone, whatever their background or gender. And so, during the visit, he attempted to teach the women, at first with little effect. I surmise Martha's proneness to distraction had been a persistent problem. Perhaps it was legitimate things that had first distracted her from her spiritual disciplines, tending to loved ones in need or working hard to earn her keep, but it's never long until less legitimate activities crowd in and soon time once spent in the scriptures is spent tending to inconsequential jobs in a flurry of bogus urgency. When we arrived, it was simply the matter of preparing a snack that kept her from his presence. And so, the tone with which he called her demanded more than just her physical presence, and she immediately changed. She stopped, drew in, and quieted herself like she was relieved to hear the voice of a dear friend she'd not heard for for some while. By the close of our meeting... Both sisters looked like they had spent an hour in heaven itself. They kept thinking of ways to keep him with them a little longer. Now, at the risk of repeating myself, if heaven is going to be so rabbi-centred, then there's absolutely nothing there for me. Brackets, Luke 10, verse 38 to 42. Third season. Entry 31. How long it has been, diary, since I wrote in you or engaged in any productive activity. I am becoming increasingly cavalier, grave and joyless. I am estranged from my friends who tell me it's difficult to tolerate my capricious views and volatile temper. I have these moments of feeling unspeakably sad and the rabbi knows it. He's had me unriddled from the start. It's often considered that thieves, adulterers or murderers would have the most raging consciences, but they've often convinced themselves that they are victims of fate and so have adorned themselves with a coat of pride. No, there's an unparalleled sickness to the feeling of exposure that the rabbi brings. Inside, I am melting like the candle which lights up this page. He's told me the way for peace, but I'll not take it yet. 
I still have so much I need to accomplish for myself before I set about following him. I always have the hope of future repentance. Entry 32 The disciples' stupidity is staggering. Of all the extraordinary feats that they have seen, they ask only to be taught how to pray. The value they place on prayer is instilled by the rabbi who, before making any important decision, spends the entire night praying. I'm too engaged in writing about God to get down to actually talking to him. Brackets, Luke 11, verse 1 to 13. Entry 33. A good treasurer will tell you that a ransom should only be paid when the treasure purchased is more valuable than the treasure spent. But when you consider who he believes himself equal to, Jehovah, and for whom he believes himself to be a ransom, people of great sin, then it's probably the first time in history that the treasure spent is worth more than the treasure gained. As for our treasure, we are to sell what we have and give to the poor. And this isn't because he wants our money, his affection can't be bought. It's so we can deplete ourselves of anything in the way of being fully purchased by himself. I must stop at this point. The hour is late, the page is dim, and the candle has hardened and expired. Brackets. Matthew 19 verse 16 to 28. Entry 34. Busy, busy, must keep myself busy, or his words circle my mind and bang at my door. I must speed on until his voice falls quiet.